Are those your show notes? It's we're now such, we sorry, really are recording <laughs> such as they are. We're on TV, okay? Yes. Uh, it's DTLT today with Jim, Andy. And, what's your name again? Martha. Oh. What? Say it again for me. It's Martha. How do you pronounce it, Jim? Martha. Jim, how do you pronounce that we're name? We're here I... with Mothra Burris. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. Mothra. Mothra. That's Mothra Burris. <laughs> Mothra. <laughs> Close relative to Godzilla and Megatron. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Second cousin. Second cousin. <laughs> How you doing, Mothra? How's it going, I'm Mothra? good. I'm glad to be back. Yeah, yeah from the yeah. Outer Banks. You don't seem glad. You've been kind of an ogre to work with over the last couple of days. What were you going to say? <laughs> yeah, You've you were going to say a, something else. You're kind of a, uh, a ogre. A boger? <laughs> <laughs> Have I been an ogre? Have you felt? Have I felt ogreish? Yeah. I've, I'm sorry. I, a couple of times I thought about going abusive, to my husband. A little abusive. <laughs> Well, it. just short. It's hard. You know, just well, like yeah. terse. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. I My re-entry has been difficult. I put the explicit tag on the thing, so don't hold back. Really, it's just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you, Look, and I brought too. my yoga CD. Oh, I'm in a very zen place right now. It's another reason. Not and I do. To what, like um, excuse me. I would like to take a moment to address my fans. <laughs> <laughs> some people have complained that I haven't been on DTLT today as much as some of my other colleagues, and that really there's a demand for me. There's a a, a real strong. This isn't this 106. <laughs> <laughs> no. And I just want to explain a few things about my position here in the Division of Teaching and Learning Technologies. I'm a part-time employee. Um, -time. And I want to explain even further why that is. Short time. Because um, a few years ago, it's I was actually. Show. Excuse me. Yes. <laughs> Come on. Speaking By of timer. Means, yeah. <laughs> I was actually in charge of these means. yahoos, and I had a yeah, mental we'll breakdown. We'll just, I couldn't take it anymore, okay. being Jim Groom's boss. So now I'm a part-timer. It limits my exposure to the insanity. Mm -hmm. um, as a result, you don't get as much as, of me as you might like. That's I am loss. sorry for that. That's but hopefully when I'm here, I contribute enough to make up for that. Mm -hmm. And now you can continue, Tim. Hey. Thanks for that. This is, this is your show, after all. <laughs> why, don't, why don't you tell us what we're talking about yeah. today, Mothra. Actually, Mothra. I did choose today's topic. And my colleagues are very excited about it. We were really excited. Yeah. yeah. Stoked. Stoked. <laughs> I just spent yeah. the last couple of weeks finishing our annual institutional effectiveness report mm -hmm. for the Division of Teaching and Learning Technologies here at Mary Washington. Right. This um, is a requirement that we do in the summer. Um, and it was a really uh, fascinating and fun exercise. <laughs> and, uh, but it did make me think a little bit about an issue of how a, an organization like ours at a university or a college should be assessed, how we prove our value to the institution at large. I think it's actually a kind of interesting question whether or not what I learned is terribly valuable isn't so much the point as yeah, yeah. in an ideal world, how would we want ourselves to be judged? So I wanted to kind of put, pose that to everybody at the table, and if there's anyone who has any thoughts. I do. Yeah. Okay, this idea of proving your value. Let's just let's think about that for a second. It's like that's the new kind of mantra for universities and everybody. It's like prove what you're worth to me, right? right? Mm -hmm. And then you do that how oftentimes, particularly in learning and education, through some sort of data, analytic, uh, we haven't come up with an analytic, right, for that. And the idea that we, who aren't even in the classroom, are going to prove our value, the relationship still has to be based on some idea of faith and some idea of the kind of implications of what we do kind of echoing throughout the community. Um, I think too often proving value leading back to some sort of data analysis kind of brings the whole thing back into this kind of circle idea. We could pump up numbers and do all that stuff, but I don't think we have enough people who care about what we do on a day-to-day -day basis in an administration to really be able to prove to them through some sort of kind of interaction, discussion, elaboration on it. It's like okay. they want to see a series of numbers. Okay, but here's the thing. I mean, I'm, we're looking for daycares right now, and if I'm looking at a daycare and we're paying – paying somewhere in the realm of $200 a week, handing it off to these people. And then in turn, we want to know what are we getting for that. And if they just say, you got to just trust us that we're, we're pretty good at what we're doing. And I think, I think if you see your daughter who you know, is one year old or whatever, she'll, she'll probably tell you that she's pretty happy. Well, that's fine and all, but there's got to be something else. And I think the, the parents and the students um, probably have some expectations as well. I think that's a good point. I think, I think daycare of kind of is kind of this in-between um, you know this segment 
of, of the economy, if you will. I think Jim's point is kind of, when we're talking about education, it's like how do you evaluate your education? Right. There are people in education that want to evaluate things on, on the corporate level, you know, yeah. in, in a corporate frame of mind and say, you know, what is this doing? How is our productivity? What are our numbers? And that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. You Te can't, test results. You, you can't right. do that in education. Yeah. You can do it somewhat with daycare. You can get recommendations. You know, are, is, are your children happy, though? You know, to me, would be a really good indication of, of how your daycare was doing, yeah, rather right. than the numbers and that sort of thing, that the hard data that was that would be coming across. And that's you know, this the your point gets to the to the idea of, of teachers being evaluated now about how their students do on tests. Yeah. You know, how do you how can you possibly justify something like that? Where in no other segment of of even corporate America is is something like that occurring, where you know. Your, how good are your customers doing is going to is going to relate to you know how how you're getting paid and that sort of thing. Um, it, there's this this double indirect correlation to how things are going. And you might have students who really like a professor, but it has absolutely nothing to do with how good of a professor right. sure. they are. They might be an easy A, and so right. it's sort of one of these things of that's not a good assessment. You know how how much the student likes a professor is probably not as good an assessment of how much they're learning as much as it is, you know, other, in fact, there's so many dynamic, things that yeah. go into it. Yeah, but it. see, that's the whole thing. Education and the whole process is social. There's right. a whole social dynamic, and, f and students getting excited by professors and excited by what they're doing and in a particular discipline does matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it you can have matter. different professors who have different ideas of what makes a good professor or not, and mm -hmm. that's fine, and they need to exist. And the idea is the professor or the professoriate or however you want to talk about the way we've imagined it up until now is that they do have independence. Yeah. Is that they can be good along their own mindset and that we trust them with that because they've gone through becoming experts in the field. Now, the more and more PhDs become dime a dozen, the more and more our university jobs are devalued, just like K through 12 jobs, the more and more we're going to have the Taylorization, industrialization of higher ed, mm -hmm. and that's inescapable. And that's when those moments of numbers and evaluation that we're seeping in right. will seem almost to make sense. Because the value of the kind of magic of the moment or of a system, however screwed up it could be at any moment, is, is completely, you know, has been dismantled, mm -hmm. I think. And it's, you know, this kind of talk of the evaluation and the numbers and stuff is, for me, the harbinger of the dismantling of higher ed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Different universities will have different strengths, and that, that's the problem with the evaluation in and of itself, is that, you know, a, a place like the University of Mary Washington, Washington, a small liberal arts college, will do something different from another university. And so you at least have to kind of categorize them in one way. But the, but what students will, f will slowly realize is once they kind of pick the direction they want to go and once they follow their passion, if we can even get them to that point, they'll realize that it's not necessarily the college, but it's, it's a person that they study with. Yeah. And it's a person that, that guides them from that point on, either into graduate school, school or through graduate school. Right. Um, and that's, you know, it, it's hard. How do you possibly evaluate something like that? But, but I, and I, I don't disagree that there's a whole lot happening in terms of learning analytics and institutional uh, assessment that's, that's pretty scary. Yeah. But I, I do disagree with the notion that this is completely unmeasurable. Like, there has to be a way within yeah, our organizations to look, at, to look at ourselves critically and say, are we doing our best? But measurable how? Like, that's that's, that's my question. Like, I, I just believe there has to, to be a way to do that. Numbers and statistics but, I'm not, but if it's not numbers, what is it? That's what I'm saying. I'm not wed to numbers, mm -hmm. but I think assessment isn't just numbers. I think that's what we're I think that's what we're, str we're struggling to figure out is, right. is, is really what, what that either combination is or what that number is. We always talk about what are the good assessment tools and, and we kind of have settled on in some ways rubrics to be kind of this well most acceptable to, to everybody kind of thing. And, and yet, I, I still think it's just, it's still another artificial way to assess okay. things. Well, couldn't we, I mean, okay, so we're a group, and this started with how do we as a group assess ourselves as a group. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a couple of things we could do. 
how much impact do we have on the faculty? Well, how do we, we have that? a system that half the faculty are using, that we have 70, 80 courses a year or a semester <coughs> being used mm -hmm. in it, that we have several faculty who have been published and who have kind of some place in the pedagogy around this, oftentimes through collaborations right. with us. So we have a track record there. Right. We have another track record nationally and internationally of people picking up on stuff we do and using it right. and writing about it. And we have a profile because uh, of it. So like, yeah. we do have like, some people have been evaluating us, right? but it doesn't kind of seem like that's the problem. It's like that doesn't speak to our administration because our administration doesn't really have a sensibility or any administration, not just about UMW, you know, right. any administration doesn't have a sensibility of knowing what ed tech is, knowing what the field is, right? right? Mm -hmm. And the idea of like you have to have faith, you know, we're experts in this field, we're professionals, we have a sense of what we're doing, we have mm -hmm. a sense of where we right. stand, you know. For instructional technologists in most places outside of Mary Washington, they're not thought of in the same professional right. manner. Right. Whereas mm -hmm. we have demanded yeah. that we are and kind of built a reputation around it. Right. So might that not be an assessment? Oh, absolutely. And my question is then, you know, how do we as, an, as a group um, harness all of that information in a, in a meaningful way to show to our institution? Like how do yeah. we build that narrative that isn't just here are the numbers? but something yeah. that really tells the story yeah. of what DTLT is within this institution well, and, because, and its impact outside of the walls of the And because school. The, yeah. one of the things that I do like about this assessment process is it allows us to look at ourselves and say, how do we want to change what they, right. it shows us what we're doing right. And I think we all agree we're doing a lot that's right and good, but also where do we want to focus? What kind of right. things, what kind of things do we want to focus on? Because we know we can't do everything. And so saying, okay, well clearly we, our audience is good here and there, but it's lacking right here. What do we need to give right. them? What do we need yeah. to change to get those people on board and do things? But I think some of that stuff emerged organically. Mm -hmm. Like right. we've seen Absolutely, that with yeah. the video, the audio, the radio stuff, the TV stuff. I mean, we're organically saying the DS-106, we're coming together and being like, wow, this is stuff we want to go, right. and it shows us stuff. And I think that kind of freedom and not this, here's what Nine you objectives. need to meet. Right. And yeah. then if you don't, like that freedom is like something I think more and more we're seeing robbed of teachers and students mm -hmm. at the K-12 level, and more and more we're seeing that seep, seep into it, yeah. And I think that's scary. And I don't want to say that you can't touch the magic that is teaching in higher ed. Right. I agree. That's, that's, that's a dangerous place to go. Absolutely. It is. But I think at the same time, if you're going to be in a space that kind of is premised upon ideas and right. the greatest ideas, you have to have a certain amount of faith in the people you hire and pay to right. do it. And mm -hmm. if you start robbing them of that faith, that's where the system itself works. Right. Well, I think that's another way that we get evaluated is that, I mean, essentially our role has become consultants. And, you know, we're evaluated by more and more people coming to consult with us. And that's, that's what's happened, and that's one way to evaluate us. Well, one of the questions that's been asked of me is how do we, in a division like ours, measure our impact on student learning outcomes? Mm -hmm. Which I feel very, very ambivalent about because I'm not the professor in the classroom. And while we may work closely with faculty members in, and in partnerships, yeah. how anything is executed in the classroom, the success mm -hmm. or the failure of that, really lies, and as it should, in the hands of the faculty member. Mm -hmm. But I do wonder if there isn't some way for us to start to look more critically at the direct impact and be able to, to really explain to people the direct impact that we do have on students, that this isn't just yeah. us sitting in a room thinking about stuff and talking to faculty, but that ultimately this plays out in the classroom yeah. and students come out of classes at Mary Washington with a vastly superior <laughs> experience. Yeah. You know, how do we describe that? Well, I mean, there are, I mean, I don't want to no, step on anyone's toes, but there are actual classes here at Mayor Washington that we put together with faculty that have, whether it be Jeff McClurkin's right. digital history class, um, Claudia Emerson's um, literary journals classes, where students have actually gotten some of these skills hands-on, and these kind of been projects for us that we've kind of dreamed up with the faculty, right. and that they have gotten real benefits out of it, whether it be jobs, whether it be exposure that they needed for certain jobs. I mean. That's not the only, and that's a whole nother thing. Is the university about getting students jobs? I don't think it is. No. But when you yeah. prepare students for the cultural moment within which they live, which a lot right. of higher ed's not yeah. doing, sometimes jobs are going to merge out of that yeah. in good ways. Yeah. But I think we can even measure some of that yeah. if we work with the faculty we've been working right. with. And they hear back from students. That's the greatest kind of thing is, hey, your class was awesome. It prepared me for X, Y, and Z. Right. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Grad school, whatever. Right. So. 
I mean, how can this stuff not be the most relevant stuff moving forward in terms of job markets, yeah. in terms no, of grad school, in terms of all of that? And if, any, if anything, the process of writing this report for me just demonstrated that we need to, as a unit, think about how we can better collect the information that we have about our impact yeah. and, and build that narrative so yeah. that at the end of the year it isn't just, oh, we worked with this number of people. That's right. Um, mm -hmm. It's this is these are the stories you of use people the survey who survey to build right. as a basis for right. this. Yeah. Do you think you'd do it again Exa or, or no uh, something different? I mean, I don't know. Any ideas well, and, and should there yeah. be evaluations of us? You know, like faculty get evaluated. You know, yeah. is there a is there a sheet at the end of a the semester yeah. that that comes yeah. in and and say you know how well did we work with you? Oh, this oh, year? oh I see what you mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, like I faculty think, evaluation of us. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I have no problem with that. And the other thing that I thought part of DTLT, like a move out, as we go field, I'm going to get an iPhone 4 and we're going to get that iPod Touch. I'm going to, maybe even 5 if I wait, but I want to go to faculty <laughs> we're working with and do, this like, and do like interviews. Right. What are you doing right now? Yeah. What's going on? And put that on the TV and that's mm -hmm. another way of bringing the community together. Right. I think one thing we can do that very few other organizations can do because they don't have the technical know-how it's bring the whole <laughs> sense of the university or together. The, or the Mothra. Or the Mothra. They don't have the Mothra. <laughs> we could do it. And all we need is an iPhone. And that could be like a whole <laughs> Apple. So we've, we, get we, that we have, on the record. We have come around to where yeah. the all iPhone is All we need the, is an, Can we clip that? All we yeah. need is a device. Yeah. And you could basically all get your faculty iPhone. as you're doing instructional technology and bring the world of the university to the people. Just do a TV show. That's wow. the whole idea of DS6 Radio. Or whatever. I'm speechless. Yeah. Oh, well, forget the <laughs> iPhone thing. You know what I'm Can saying. Can we talk about my new CD? <laughs> <laughs> Well, look, I don't know if we we answered more questions than we brought up, but I think it's a good topic to talk about. Michael Branson oh. Smith posted a link, and I'm going to put it in the show notes, of something that Cooney's doing, a professor there. Um, oh. So that's some interesting information to check but out. But I just want to go back. That. You did say it's a good topic to talk about, yeah, right? It, you did say that, right? It's a good, it's a it's great an, topic. Thanks. Yeah. It's, yeah. A great it's topic. not a great, it's a good topic. The report, you know, <laughs> eh, but the topic is great. <laughs> All right. See you all next time. Thanks.